Hello and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Ja and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, our topic is on the higher education system in Liberia. That's higher education in Liberia. Our guest tonight is Dr. Sawuwa Soma. Dr. Soma, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. I'm very delighted to be with you this evening. Thank you. We want to welcome all our viewers across the world. We are focusing on higher education in Liberia tonight. Keep tuned. Dr. Soma is uh, on a short break in the U.S. He's uh, the president and professor at Haber College in Mount Gibi, Liberia. Uh, we're glad to have him to discuss focus on higher education in Liberia. So feel free with your questions and comments as your program goes along. In the meantime, uh, Dr. Soma is a historian, so let's uh, play something from our timeline. All right, Dr. Someone wanted to play something for you, but it's not working. <laughs> I hope I get it. Uh... All right, this is a uh, focus on Liberia. Why we uh, warm up, we want to play the timeline of some historical events in Liberia. I know uh, we played that last week and uh, by popular demand, I was asked that uh, this be streamed again. So as we wait for the program to begin, enjoy some historical events on a timeline before, from 1400 to present. Again, our topic tonight is higher education in Liberia. Our guest is Dr. Soma, president of Haber College in Mohangibi County, Liberia. But as we uh, warm up, we want to present some historical events in Liberia on the timeline from 1400 to present. Right now you are reading uh, from 1820 to 1900. Take time and read. Liberia is, um, is a, we just celebrated our independence. So we want to remind our viewers of uh, how far we have come in our historical sojourn. 
enjoy the timeline. This is focused on Liberia, where we attempt to educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. William V.S. Tudma, inaugurated 1944. If you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We welcome our viewers in all parts of the world, watching us by via Facebook. We say welcome to Focus on Liberia. Our topic today, the higher education in Liberia. Our guest is Dr. Soma, president of Haber College. That's in Mangibi County, Liberia. Before going to Haber in December 2015, he was vice president for administration at the Tottenham University in Harper, Maryland County. Before going to Liberia, Dr. Osuma was here in the US where he taught. He's back with us on a vacation and he's gonna to talk to us tonight on higher education in Liberia. We wanna discuss what really higher education is. What, what, what is that? What's the focus? What are the challenges? What are some of the, um, the things that we are doing well? What are the things that we're struggling with? What can we do, all of us, to improve higher education in Liberia? Dr. Soma has taught both in the US and also in Liberia. He's gonna give us his own experience. And uh, later in the broadcast, we're gonna invite someone who went to school in Liberia on the university level, came here in the US and got his uh, master's degree. Now he's working on his PhD. He's in the right position to tell us really because he has lived both worlds so he can you know, share his experience with us both in the classroom in Liberia and also in the US. Keep tuned, we will be bringing our Dr. Suman on shortly. He's joining us from North Carolina. He's here visiting with family on a short vacation. He's gonna be going back, I think it's next month. But while we're here, we, we decided to uh, talk to Dr. Suman on higher education in Liberia. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you take part, uh, write down your questions, send us your comments. You can also call uh, our guest relations manager, Stephanie Setro will be posting the number uh, shortly. So you can call that number. And uh, before we continue, so that's a uh, present, we are all the way to July. So you can still enjoy the timeline, the historical timeline, and uh, look at Liberia in another way. You know, see all the things that we've gone through and uh, see where we are today. Picture those who have worked so that we can reach this far. Their effort may have not been excellent, but we have a country today because somebody laid a foundation. We can have uh, things to say about what was done in the past, but that's Liberia. We have a country and he has been moving through all these uh, historical events. Some are trauma, some are happy events, but that's the country we have. So this should challenge all of us as to uh, what can we do so that we can fall on this timeline. For better or for worse, we want us to uh, be part of history making in Liberia. We at Focus on Liberia, we try to uh, educate, we try to elevate and promote all things Liberia. And that uh, each of us, regardless of our background, we can do the best we can to make Liberia what it ought to be. So that at the end of the day, all of us can sing about this sweet land of liberty. I hope you are enjoying the timeline. I hope you are enjoying these uh, historical events. And it's, uh, as we come, closer to 2009, 2010, you're beginning to uh, kind of remember some of those events. Some of us, we live those events and it's better to reflect on them sometime and see where we are as a nation and what each of us can do to move the country forward. 
Again, if you are just joining us, my name is Dennis Ja. We are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. This is Focus on Liberia. We broadcast every Sunday at 6 p.m. via Facebook Live. Uh, all our uh, past shows are on YouTube. What we are trying to do is to create a repository so that anytime at your own convenience, you can hop on YouTube and watch these shows, still make comments. Uh, we are very proud of our guests. They always uh, go back and answer some of those questions. Wherever you are, we say welcome. Uh, you can call in, you can post your questions, you can write your comments, or you can contact us anytime. And uh, we appreciate all your support and what you continue to do to keep focus on Liberia, focusing on what we're supposed to be focusing on. Uh, we love you and we really appreciate all the help that you gave us. We appreciate your support. And uh, bit by bit, wrong by wrong, we as a nation will get there. We know, um, you know some of these historical events are not pretty. Uh, heavily armed fighters believed to have come from Liberia seas, a border village in Western Africa, all these, but these are all part of our history. And we can all help to make Liberia what we all want it to be. Uh, from the short history, we see that our pre administrations come and go, but the country Liberia remains. So what can we do so as to contribute towards history, to make history? And we all have a part to play. Liberians, this is the only country we have, and we need to do whatever it takes to make it that glorious land of liberty. I want to welcome folks from uh, across the world. I see uh, some colleagues all the way from Liberia. We say welcome to Focus on Liberia. We see your uh, people throughout the United States are logging on. We say welcome, share the video, invite your friends to log on. We, have this, we are going to discuss higher education in Liberia. Higher education in Liberia. What is higher education? Dr. Soma is here. He's going to lay out there for us. He has a vast experience and knowledge. He's going to tell us all these things and uh, please contribute. We want our folks in Liberia who are maybe students or professors and teachers at the university to please log on. Again, that's the end. Those are our sources. We want to thank our colleagues uh, right here at uh, Focus on Liberia for the wonderful work making this research. Again, before we continue, let's play this disclaimer. The opinions expressed by guests on Focus on Liberia are solely the opinions and responsibility of the original source who expressed them. They do not represent the opinions of Focus on Liberia or its affiliates. Thank you. Dr. Soma, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. All right. Let's start briefly. Though. I know. Welcome. We are glad to have you. How's Liberia and how's the vacation? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dennis. I am very uh, delighted to be with you. I want to greet my uh, staff and my students at Haber College, my friends and family back there. The vacation is, uh, is okay, and uh, we are preparing to go back and help our native land. Uh, there where we came from, as you said, uh, Liberia is a beautiful place. It has good history. Right. And we are ones that can continue to make that history. Right. So Dr. Soma, Dr. Soma is a native of Liberia, born in Kokoya, Upper Bong County. Uh, on January 1, 1959. You are a young man, Doc. He graduated <laughs> from Zwedru Multilateral High that's in Zwedru, Liberia, educated at Forillo at LaGuardia Community College in Long Island, New York, where he earned his associate degree, a BSc degree in occupational safety and health from the State University of New York. He has two master degrees, one in general healthcare administration from Michigan University and History and Religion from the University of Oklahoma. Dr. Soman uh, was appointed president of Haber College by President Ellen Johnson Salif. That's on December 8, 2015. Before joining Haber College, he served as vice president for administration 
and Vice President for Sponsored Programs and Economic Development at William V. S. Tutman University in Harper, Maryland County. He's a recipient of numerous awards, including the Outstanding Service Through Training and Promotion of Safety Awareness, City of Greensboro. Uh, he's also the author of several books, including the Historical Resettlement of Liberia and its Environmental Impact, Christianity, Colonization, and the State of the African Spirituality, Yang Yang Go Mana, History and Migration of and Government of the Basel People. That's the book about the traditional Basel leadership and cultural norms. It was published in 2003. Dr. Soma, once again, welcome to uh, Focus on Liberia. Before, the, uh, before I play a timeline of uh, historical events, I know there's something, you like the timeline, you told me, but there's something that you didn't like about the timeline. Tell me why it is. No, well, it is a good job. You have done excellent. Okay. Uh, you know, few people look or embrace our history and you had done a, a wonderful uh, work to share with the nation and people around the world about Liberia. Uh, what I said that uh, I hope you have uh, put our history in context of human migration, where we as Liberian people, where we came from, for example, the Basa, the Pele, uh, the Mandingo, the Va, the Loma, we all came from somewhere and we are part of the Hema family. And then uh, after the diffusions of the Hema race out of Africa um, and the end of the SH that lasted for 70 million years, uh, our forefather began to migrate because of the SH in Northern uh, Africa. We became part of the Bantu, the Bantu migration that lasted for uh, 4,500 years. So instead of going to stage two, I was hoping that we start with stage one. one. And, and I hope you will work on that, Jenna, but you did a, you did a good work. Well, and, you, you are the historian, so please help us. <laughs> we will work together. Uh, you All may right. know that Haber uh, College offers uh, Liberian Studies, Bachelor of Science degree in Liberian Studies. So your material is very, very useful. We are willing to work with you so we can put our history in proper context because Liberian history did not start with the 1400, now with the 1200, now in 1816 or 1817 either. We have existed at the Hema family for more than uh, 4.5 million years before coming to Liberia. So we want to see that kind of historical context of our history. All right, thank you. But we are not here for history tonight. <laughs> we are here for higher education. Thank you. So let's go into our, uh, into our program. Again, we want to say welcome to our Focus on Liberia where we educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We want to uh, thank you again for coming, Dr. Soma, for honoring our invitation. Let's start by saying, what is higher education? Just basic. Well, you know, there is no monolithic definitions of higher education. It depends whether you go to London, America, uh, and other parts of the world. Okay. But to, to, to just reduce it, one could say that higher education is any education that it above high school level. Okay. And it requires specialization in fairer areas. For example, bachelor science degree, it would be a master's or a PhD or vocational education. Those areas are specialized. That's what higher education is. Any level of education that is about secondary education. So, so vocational schools and all the, um, the vocational schools, do you remind this, after high school, you have a lot of secretarial science and all these, are, all these are part of higher education. Am I, is that correct? As long as it is above secondary, yes, they are considered to be uh, higher education. You know, but if you go to London, you will, you will use the word diplomas. You see, this is what I'm saying that it depends in what country you are, uh, the diff is very, very uh, difficult to give it a, a single meaning. Right. To make it simple for our discussion, as long as it is above secondary and that the person who gets the education is going to be specialized, that mm -hmm. person becomes a professional individual in his or her specialization for mm -hmm. 
a benefit of that person and his or her nation. All right. So what's the history of higher education in, in Liberia? When did it all get started? You know, our nation has come a long, long way. Uh, okay. Before I became, bear in mind that the return of the settler to Liberia was not anything that America wanted to support. They wanted them to go, but getting there to establish themselves as a model in the world was not what America was thinking about. Mm. So the support that we needed to establish Liberia, to plan the country in terms of higher education, that was not the case. Now, what we know today as higher education started in 1851. Uh, at that time, the uh, government of Liberia, in fact, it was private in, uh, entity, individuals, some of them from New York, that started higher education in Liberia. When that happened, Joseph Jenkins Roberts was asked to be the first president of Liberia College. So if anybody wants to know the histories of uh, our presidents, all the presidents becoming visitors to our various universities, especially the private institution, they were started from, because Joseph Jenkins Rabber was the president at that time and he was the first president. Okay. Uh, when it started, there was some confusion. Higher education has a history of confusion in Liberia. Mm. First, there was a certain group from Clay Aslan. They wanted for the university to be there, to go to that city. But though from Monrovia, they refused. And there was a lot of confusion that caused the university construction to delay for four years. After the construction, uh, we had about three uh, professors and seven students. It took a very, very long time for them to graduate. I think it's almost like a 31 years. So we have made some progress when it comes in terms of higher education, but we do have a history of not planning properly. The curriculum that was developed was not anything to serve the local needs of the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a new nation in Africa. And some of the courses that were being offered were in the Greek and Latin. Mm -hmm. Later on, we offer classic, theology, and especially those who came from America, they have the background in business and in Greek, in Latin, people that blotting. You couldn't fault him for that. He couldn't teach what he didn't know. So they put in place a colonial curriculum for the Republic of Liberia. Mm. This is why today you look at our country, it is not easy to have engineers. It is not easy to have uh, people wanting to do other areas, but politics, business, theology, and the contents, because most of the people that return to Liberia, those areas were their backgrounds. And that was in the 19th century. So let, let's look now the, the purpose, because higher education should have a purpose. Why is it that we want to have people be trained above high school? In Liberia, what's the purpose? You know, why was it established and what is the purpose now? Well, the, the purpose was to have an educated citizens okay. that will learn and become the economic brains of the country to contribute to the economic development. Uh, no nation in the world survives without higher education, without proper uh, curriculum to train the needs of the country. Okay. So higher education, the goals here is that the citizens should be educated uh, to be able to support the development of the country, to support research. Mm -hmm. If you don't have educated people in your country, you will have businesses to come to Liberia. IBA can't come there if you don't have people majoring in the technology, okay. computer, and other new courses. But the point I was making was that we have not yet graduated. We have not yet dissuaded ourselves 
from that old colonial curriculum that was established. So if you go back to Liberia today, most of the universities that are there, they are still thinking about that traditional uh, aspects of higher education in Liberia. And, and that was 1851, and that's what you say, that's what we are still thinking about. That's correct. I also learned that in the 1950s, you know, during the, the, uh, the colonial period in, in, uh, in Africa, Liberia was emphasizing training lawyers that would represent uh, Africa, you know, to champion the causes of um, the freedom or the, the independence, independence of these African nations. For example, at one point, Liberia sued South Africa before the League of Nations. So Liberia needed to train those lawyers. Has that changed or what has shifted? Have we moved away from that now to say, okay, for instance, after the war, we need to train this group or we need to emphasize this discipline so has to meet the growing needs of the country. Has that shift been done? Well, those were noble things that Liberia did, mm -hmm. the champion, the independent movement of Africa. That was good. I mean, nobody would have fought anyone about that. Uh, even the war between uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, Biafra and Nigeria, you know, in Nizigwe, right from the University of Liberia. So he and uh, Ojuku came to Liberia and Toba on a plane went there and uh, to negotiation, they walked into an end. We were friends with Nelson Mandela. You can name all the freedom fighters in Africa. They came to Liberia. That was a great thing to do, but we need to move on from that. And this is what we have not yet done. We need to plan the national curriculum of Liberia. It can't be left in the hand of an individual or few people. Mm -hmm. You see, curriculum are developed based on relevance, the local needs of the nation. We need to focus on that. We can only just offer degrees in administration and sociology, mm. and we leave it right there. There are other areas, for example, you want to go see the eye doctors, you want to go to see the ear doctors. You, 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 I mean, there are other areas, biotechnology, environmental science, disaster yeah. management. There are other areas that we need to develop curriculum so that when we produce students, they don't look for job. Hmm. They themselves become what? The creator yeah, of creator. jobs in Liberia. And that's what we need to do in our country. So run me through the history of higher education. Now we said Liberia College was established 1851. So from 1851 till now, walk me through that path to what we have today. What, what went through was that uh, the, the government just relaxed. From 1851 to 1978, it was when we had the what? The second college in Liberia, WVA Tupper, that 136, that, is that 136 uh, years? So one thing that I noticed about us as, as a people, is something called time being. It's, it's a very familiar word in Liberia. Time mm. being, just for now. Put something mm. in place and leave it there with the hope that we're going to come back. We we'll never ever come back to it. Yeah, it's a nation, our population today as we speak. I'm not talking about private university. I'm talking about public. More than 4 million people, the, the, the country has four higher institutions of learning about the bachelor of science degree level. The rest are what? Community colleges that they came very recently right after the war when Helen Johnson Sully and her government uh, passed the higher education decentralization. So how do you expect our nation to be educated? In fact, when Joseph Jenkins Rao became president, he did something that was very, very wrong. Uh, again, as you say, it's our history, but we gotta share the thing for people to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. He passed a law not to educate any indigenous student at the University of Liberia. Really? Oh, yes. There came a time that if you were not mulatto, you couldn't enter the University of Liberia. If your last name was not reflective of a secular, you could not enter the University of Liberia. In fact, it was the second president, Blading, woman, Blading, who allowed women to enter Liberian college. You see, so the University of Liberia was established exclusively to educate the settler children and not that of the what? The natives mm. or what other word you want to use for them. Mm. 
So that kind of derail, it didn't help Liberia or the confusion, the infighting that we see in Liberia today from the student, you got to, you got to fend for yourself. So entering the university or another easy thing. Now we don't have a roadmap though, as we speak. When it comes to the constructions of school in Liberia, either one of those senators or representative will drop a bill and they send it to the president and then you have your college. It shouldn't be that way. What if we have a national conference on higher education mm. 15 years from now, 10 years from now, 25 years from now, 50 years from now, where should we have colleges and universities in the Republic of Liberia? Mm. Now, uh, so, look at... Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me, before we even go further, you, you talk about four, uh, pop, four degree, bachelor degree granting institutions, and two of them are public. What is the current statistics of higher education in Liberia? What are the numbers? Right now we have uh, nine uh, public and we have 24 private. Okay. Of that nine, you have Cuttington, the University of Liberia, and Sarah, uh, Stella Marie Polytechnic. Yeah. Those are the only three schools in Liberia that offer a master degree. As we speak, you cannot get a master degree in biology, in physics, in English, in most of the liberal art courses that are needed to have a qualified instructor to teach in the Republic of Liberia. Look, then we know our problem. We know our problems. Nobody mm. got to bring the same culture or some kind of international aspect to come and tell us that, you know, these are our problems. They are staring and glaring right, in our, in our, right before us. But what we need to do is to put a program together to map up higher education in Liberia. And that we have not done. Mm. So when yeah. we talk... Yeah, I, I, read your, I read your paper, Branding Higher Education in Liberia. And in that paper, you describe... Uh, the state of higher education in Liberia has pathetic. Wow. That, that. <laughs> Why you said that? <laughs> you know, you got to be frank with yourself. You know, when you love a nation, you love yourself, you love your, your family, when something is going wrong, you got to have the gut hmm. to say it. Uh, Dennis, the first college in Liberia, that 1851. Now, we don't offer a PhD. Mm. Not even a master degree. We got something called a, a rural planning. Regional master, planning. Rural planning and uh, journalism. I mean, that's it. For the nation that is 171 years old. I mean, I don't know what we do this thing to ourselves. But, but you know, at, at one point, like Gambia, offer yeah. only I think bachelor degree, but it still does. I mean, I think if the bachelor degree, if you have a quality undergraduate degree, that that's fine. Do we need PhD? Oh, we need that. We need that. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I were to ask anybody, give me the statistics of a librarian that are graduating with PhD, I'm telling you, you you you're not gonna believe it. We 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 need to do we need to do something. Look, you got. Sierra uh, Leone. They are university of 1829. Our 1851. Uh, mm. So we are the second oldest. They are offering PhDs and master degrees. Go to Guinea, Secretary Guinea. They got PhD. La Sana County University are offering PhD. Liberia developed the curriculum of Ghana according to history. When Kwame Nkrumah was on his way to Ghana to participate in the independent movement of that country, he stopped in Monrovia to consult our president. According to what he told him was, education is the bad rock. When you go to Ghana, focus on education. Dennis, hmm. come back to our country. I teach at Kwame Nkrumah University as a visiting professor. You see Kwame Nkrumah University, you're not going to believe it. What is happening to us? What is the problem? We gave the advice. We made all the good history. 
we 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 are you know we we, we work with Nelson Mandela. Hmm. We get need nation. We help them to get their independence. Right now, as we speak, the educational budget of uh, 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 Senegal that twenty percent Africa, one point six billion or one point eight from point six to point eight billion. Ethiopia. I mean, these countries are far ahead of us. Hmm. Uh, you go to Uganda, you're not going to believe it. Now, we are, uh, people say the stepdaughter or the stepson of the United States of America. Tell me how many the American university satellites are in our country right now. I think the university of Liberia is doing something with Michigan. Beside that, that's it. Student exchange, faculty exchange, forming partnership with Europe and France and America. I mean, we need to do something. We cannot just be uh, uh, comfortable with what is going on when it comes to higher education in the Republic of Liberia. But, but Dr. Soma, you said pathetic. And I think not granting masters or PhD for those disciplines doesn't mean pathetic. Well, it means more than that. Besides that, oh, it means yeah. more than that. OK? okay. What, what, what uh, does it mean? Students, our students need to be given the opportunity to go to the, the universities in Liberia, private university. It has to be affordable. They need quality and qualified curriculum and instructor to teach the courses. Okay. We need innovations, research university, specialized university. When I say petate, it means that those that we have, they are ahead of us and we are lagging behind. So we need to see reason to, to, to graduate or to lift ourselves off from the dungeon. And so it's a pathetic situation. Hmm. Now you know what is wrong with you, but you don't want to do enough to get you out, yourself out of the situation that you are in. There is a national uh, commission for higher education in Liberia you know, that was established. What is the role of that commission? What are they doing to remedy this pathetic situation that you have described? Uh, Dennis, uh, one of the things we do in Liberia is when it comes to policy making, uh, don't get me wrong, man, we are brilliant at that. We can put Google policy together, but the implementation of that, of that policy. Look, I don't take anything away from the folks that are working there, but you go to, I don't know, have you seen the, the office or the building that the higher education commissioner is located in? No. On SD Copa Road, right in the curve over there. At our age, as a nation, that building doesn't reflect Liberia higher education. Besides, mm. you need a manpower to conduct our visits, inspections to the colleges, they need calls to go and travel to see what the colleges are doing. Uh, I, I remember, I, I, just, I can't come up with a name right now, uh, but there was a, a school in Liberia that was offering a degree, a medical degree in, in, in Liberia. You can, you can walk to Liberia today and you can open a school and you can operate before they will come and, and, and find you what mm -hmm. is it that you are doing. It shouldn't be like that. Accreditation is very, very important. Uh, we need specialization. You can't have all the colleges and universities in Liberia offering degrees in the same area. We are competing for what we don't have. For example, there are two specializations in Liberia, nursing. If you get a Liberia today, you ask 10, 10 girls, seven out of 10, they're gonna tell you that they wanna do nursing. We put up more students in business than any other area in our country. Why do we do that? Redundancies will not help our country. Mm -hmm. So the role of higher education is for accreditation. They want to, uh, one of their roles is to make sure that the professors are qualified, that mm -hmm. they have the prerequisite background to teach the area that they are teaching. Like in the US, when I was teaching, if you cannot publish paper, you cannot write grant, can't go to conferences and do anything, you're not going to be promoted to uh, from 
I joined to assisting and associate to full professor. But you go to Liberia, you go in the classroom, everybody there is prof. But when it comes to the production of what they have produced in terms of publications and stuff, it is not there. You don't have our professor then writing books joined together, our math book so that can be written, economic, our own environmental science, our own Liberian history can be revised. There are so many things that we can do to bring our nation to par with other countries in the world. And the Higher Education uh, Commission support to help our country to do that, to form partnerships, international partnerships, to classify some universities that you your specialization, for example, is be in engineering. Here we have the best university in climate change and agriculture to conduct research there mm -hmm. so that the government can use the research to make informed decisions. If the higher education is weak, they are not supported, they don't have no force, then you're going to have problems. Who represents Liberia when it comes to the budget? To speak for higher education and say, look, we need certain amount of money to do A, B, C, and D. I have not heard that since I've been there. Hmm. So we have that uh, agency is there, but it needs to be in power. It needs to be tenure. You got people there. If you don't get in tenure, they are afraid to speak. And the only way our country is going to be developed is for people to be patient so that some of all who see some good things about this country to be able to discuss it. We're not here to criticize A, B, C, and D, the higher education problems of the country instead of from the foundations of Liberia, it has never been corrected. And until we come together as a people, the best and the brightest of Liberia, the sons and daughters, to develop a blueprint or a roadmap for higher education, then as I'm telling you, we are not going to develop because no country develops without educated people. And that is the conundrum that we, have, we are faced with. If you are just joining us, this is a uh, focus on Liberia. We are discussing higher education in Liberia. Our guest is Dr. Sewuwa. No, oh, you have to help me with this one. Sawuwa, then take it easy. Sawuwa Soma. Dr. Sawuwa Soma. <laughs> and uh, that I have, I have uh, a fellow who went to school in Liberia and also went to school here. I want to bring him on, uh, Saki Golafale, to share his experience. He lived it both uh, right there in Liberia and also here. One of out educated people. And that is a conundrum that we have, we are faced with. Mr. Golafale, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Focus on Liberia. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, welcome, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. Good, uh, Mr. Golafale uh, graduated from the University of Liberia, I believe, and came here, did his master's, and now he's doing his PhD. So he has lived, you know, he has lived under the uh, pathetic higher education the where he graduated from, and now he's here. So I brought him on so he can share his experience. Mr. Gulafali, first, uh, tell me a little bit about your schooling that I described. Okay, thank you very much for having me on your program this evening. And uh, also thank you to Dr. Soma for uh, coming on and, and educating us about the historical, you know, path about, of our, our high, higher education system. Thank you for, for that. I was, I was really impressed. But uh, as you say, I'm a, I'm a student at uh, Clark Atlanta University where I'm doing my uh, doctoral studies in, in chemistry. Hmm. But, uh, I graduated from the University of Liberia and in 2010 with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. And uh, my interest in teaching and research, uh, higher education as a matter, uh, led me to be on this side, uh, trying to get my, my PhD. Hopefully I can complete very soon and go back to Liberia to help uh, as I usually say, help uh, restore our broken social uh, uh, systems. So uh, that's exactly what I'm involved with. And uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, not only being a student at Clark, I also a teaching assistant, uh, doing research and uh, teaching assistant at Clark Atlanta University. And I also uh, lecture at Spelman College is, is, uh, is uh, uh, 
all-female college right around my school, the same community of, of institutions around there. So yeah. Okay, so Mr. Golapfala, you went to school in Liberia. Right now, and uh, even when you look at what some of the graduates from the university, from some of the university, they are, what they write does not even represent uh, that of a, a, a high school student, some of them. You went through that system. How did you come here and you, uh, and you made it? What was different about you that you will come here and still do a good job and now you are in your doctoral program doing chemistry? Can you believe that? Is it mean that our schools are good, right? If we can get Saki yeah, doing yeah. so well. Um, to say our schools are good, it, it, it depends on the kind of school you went to and the kind of person you are and how you took your education, how seriously you took it. Uh, of course, it, it's, it's always good as uh, Dr. Soma said, you don't see the thing and don't say it. All right, it's always good to be frank about your environment. The school system in Liberia is, is, is deplorable, okay? And I went through that same deplorable school system. So uh, I'm a witness to it. I went to high school, I went to college, and I saw it, I experienced it. But uh, that didn't uh, stop me from pursuing higher education and uh, knocking my chest or challenging worldviews anywhere in the world I can, regardless of our deplorable education system. And of course, I, 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 went, through, I, went, I, I went to school through the war, you know, as you know, the war was on and off every time there was war. And uh, those difficult times didn't deter me from going to school. They, our key focus was get education because education does not only uh, help you as an individual, it helps the society. And there are a lot of opportunities as a, in, a, in education, especially for higher education, career-wise, and it, it offers the country a better uh, position in terms of competition or uh, in technology, in business and other things. So I saw being an educated person going fighting for it as an ultimate goal for me, regardless of all the difficulties, both in high school and college. What's, what's about your, 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 your colleagues? What do you have that some don't have for which uh, you probably succeeded where some didn't? Well, uh, uh, I don't like to look down on people, but uh, everyone has something special to offer in society. Uh, but I will share this with you when I was in college, I mean, when I was in high school. And we all, I used to be a good math student, uh, chemistry, I mean, all the subjects, I will put my mind into them and try to master them. Because we used to, we do general, you know, things in Liberia, all the subjects, 11 to 12 subjects. So I used to be good in chemistry. I used to be good in mathematics. I used to be good in, uh, not, uh, uh, I used to be good in history, writing, you know, and essay and literature and all those things. But uh, something I always used to hear from students, especially when it comes to the, the physical science courses or the mathematical courses like physics, chemistry, mathematics, you hear students asking, what am I going to do with this in my office? What yeah. am I going to do? So I didn't have an answer to that at the time because I was part of the group of people that usually ask those questions too. Yeah. Okay, despite our hard studies we did, but we still used to ask the questions. And a lot of students who asked those questions were uh, students who were failing, who didn't take their lessons seriously, mm. okay? And we reached a point where when I got into college, I started to realize that uh, there's something more than just high school. So most of those people that uh, used to ask those questions, they didn't make it to college. Some of them dropped on the way, some of them struggled. And you know, uh, but again, everyone has something special to offer. Some people went into trade, some people went into vocational schools. So, uh, uh, High school and college, college is not for everyone. Some people decide where they want to go. So I don't okay. think that to be different from me. We all have something special, but people yeah. look at education differently from different perspectives. So what was your experience when you came to the States? What, you know, what was different and how did you, you know, manage 
to uh, to to complete first your 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 master program. What did you find challenging, and how did you uh, meet those challenges? Well, I uh, before coming to the U.S. and it's and for any country, any country for that matter, or uh, you if you want to go to do your studies, you have to study the environment. You have to know what what the challenges are, what you're going to meet. So prior to coming to the U.S., I had had a long time study of U.S. education system, especially for higher education, and what I expected of you as a student. And uh, compared to Liberia, where uh, we, we don't have all of the facilities, we don't have all of the uh, professors, you know, we, we literally do things almost on our own. But uh, coming to the U.S., I knew I had to hit the ground running, and I was challenged to maintain setting grade points as a, as, a, as a graduate student. Okay, initially I came as a master student and I was doing my master courses, all right? So uh, just a point of correction, I didn't uh, obtain my master's, but I, my master's program was, uh, was, was transferred to a doctoral program, all okay. right? I, I should have graduated in 2015, but I was offered, hello? Yes, go ahead. I see a call coming. Oh, it's good? Okay. No, that, that's, that's fine. We're, we're, right. we're... When, I, when I was offered the opportunity to do my doctoral program, I didn't hesitate because one, there was funding to do the doctoral program. And for the master's program, they were running out of funding and I have funding to do the doctoral program. So I took it right away. The reason I took it was because I, I know going back to Liberia, our university needs people with terminal degrees to uh, help rebuild the, the faculty, the curriculum, as Dr. Soma said, we still have some problem with our curriculum and we need a lot of uh, uh, standardized way of doing things. So uh, terminal degrees give the university uh, a lot of hope for competition on the global stage. All so right. it's been a challenge here at my university. I have, a, I have absorbed all of the challenges in classroom, in the lab, and uh, all of the things that I didn't have opportunity to use like instruments and the research tools, I was able to put in time to get myself acquainted with them. There were some setbacks, but of course, those challenges, if you're not able to meet them up, if you're not able to beat them, then you're not ready for graduate school in the US or anywhere. Thank you. Dr. Soma, I see your face light up as Saki was talking. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm very proud of him, you know, uh, it shows that when you have the learning environment, if you have the appropriate laboratory, library, you know, you got people advising you what type of class to take, the, 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 the uh, number of classes, you know, then, then, then you, you do good, you become a good student. But look, uh, I use the word Petalia, you know, you, you know, so that people will hear it and say, oh, you know, you're trying to beat on Liberia. But look, you go to some of the colleges and universities in Liberia, there's no computer lab. There's no computer lab. There's no library. I'm telling you, there's no library. Tell me when the first public library was built in our country. It depends where you read at 1837. 1837, around the 37, 36. Today, Show me how many public libraries we have in Liberia, in Pinsville and Grand Jelly, Grand Basel and other places where a child would come from school and go and say, let me sit and read something. Mm. It's petty. So Dr. Soma, you taught both you know, the US and also in Liberia. What, what did you find different with the students, with the teachers, with the campus, everything in between? Well, this is like a comparing David to Goliath. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you know, one thing I, uh, it, it, it touches my heart when I, when I went back to the library to teach, the students, they, they want to learn. Hmm. They are looking for chances. You know, everybody should be given a chance in life. It is not there. Hmm. Education now is like a business in Liberia. At some of these schools, their tuition is so high, you won't believe it. 
even at the elementary and junior high school level where the students will be prepared before coming to college. You got to pay for exams. If you don't pay the teacher exams, you're not going anywhere. Dennis, I was very, very young. My mother used to bring me from, from Gibi. I'll tell you this for one second. There was a music I can still remember during my formative years from, mm. from Zaire, the Congo. Bonticia, Bereyo, Sekuta, Congo. I can't sing, but I remember that song very, very well, my formative year. Wow. My mom would put me in the car, we'd come to Monrovia. After 40 years in the United States, I went back. One car goes, one car comes. The same road from Kakata all the way to Monrovia. We cannot be satisfied with the kind of stuff. Hmm. America is different. You go to even Ghana, teaching at Kwame Nkrumah University. You know, I taught in the USA, I never use chalk. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do it. Is it a PowerPoint or erasable something? Prayer. Yeah. You get in the classroom in Liberia, it's so hot. Students are still sitting in a high chair at the university level. My dear brother, comfort. You got to sit in the classroom at the cold. At least it's conducive. Yeah. You have access to the computer, to the internet. You can read. You got professor that should be willing after class to sit for an hour to sit with you. I had to tour when I do my safety and engineering. You see, and look, if your if all your students can't pass your class, they're gonna wonder why you a low teacher and poor can't pass. I know. You understand? Yeah. So it is different. We're not saying that Liberia should be America tomorrow. But they, these are some, some stuff that we can do. Mm -hmm. When our national leaders are traveling, how many of the presidents do they carry from our colleges and university? Carry them. Let us sit with our counterparts and discuss how we can form partnership. We should not always ask for money. I'm not talking about the present administration. I'm looking at like Liberia from it beginning to where we are today. We need to ask for resources. Ask for scholarships from Japan, from the US, from London, from wherever from Uganda. Send Liberians abroad to go and learn and come back with masters and PhDs. Hmm. Those are some sure. of the things that we need to do. The money don't really have to come to what? Out of our pocket all the time. Right. Why is it we don't have satellites, as I said from the very beginning, of the uh, American universities? Most hmm. of the research in Africa, it goes to, uh, uh, most of the research goes to, to, to Uganda. Why not Liberia? Most right. of the students right now in, in, in South Africa, in Ghana, why not Liberia? How many students have we have between the United States and America? And this is the country where some of our funding father came from. What is wrong? Something hmm. is fundamentally and cognitively wrong with us until we graduate from the dungeon. We got to disabuse ourselves from the condition in which we have put ourselves. And and we will find out what is wrong. We'll find out tonight. Let's go to our callers. There's a caller on the line. So let me see. Okay, did we lose that caller? All right. Something is fundamentally and cognitively wrong with us until we graduate from this dungeon. We're going to disabuse ourselves from the position in which we have Call out your name and where you're calling from. Oh, I can probably join that call later. Hello, I'm here. Okay, your name and where you calling from? Hey, I'm calling from DC. Um, my name is Jimmy. Hi. Oh. Um, I appreciate the show and uh, and uh, especially Dr. Soma. He met, he mentioned some points and and uh, our humble Saki as well. He's he proven himself to be a dedicated uh, a student. Um, what I would like to uh, mention, um, today I see um, the whole goal of education has been shifted in, to, in the minds of our youth. It, it, education is about getting a piece of paper. And when we were coming up, we, we realized education is about getting skills. So if you get out of school and you have a piece of paper without obtaining the skills that you were there for, 
then you've done nothing because education is to prepare you for life, to give you those skills that you will be able to employ to gainfully uh, uh, make a life. But today, if you're only there to get that piece of paper, the, the goal has shifted. It's become the getting the paper instead of getting the skills that are needed. And, and because of that, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I'm, not, I'm a fan of higher education, but I'll, I look at Liberia and the needs today. Do we need English uh, professors or what I should say, graduates? Do we, I think we need more tangible skills. Mm-hmm. We need skills that they can employ right away in their environment. And to that point, because the dropout rate is so high in Liberia, like Dr. Suma was describing, the, the conditions of the people, they have, they have to go sell. They have to make, earn a living with their parents. So in other words, if you don't give these kids a skill as early as even elementary school, mm. then, then you, you, you're you not doing them a favor. What are you of teaching them history? Instead of, I teach you how to sew. I teach you how to make a plank. So then you will be more productive right away in your, your, your environment. So I'm an advocate of vocational learning more than anything else. And I like to hear Dr. Uh, Soma's opinion about uh, focusing on vocational learning for our situation in Liberia today. Th- thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Dr. Soma, you heard Jimmy from DC. Yeah, Jimmy is on point. He absolutely right. This is what I said, the curriculum or curricula in Liberia need to be revised so that we can produce skills. Uh, I, I tell you that everybody, one of the courses or programs that we offer at Habel College, and you know when I talk about this, people just, they just look at me, especially in what I call agro-business. Now, the bachelor degree requires that when you graduate, you are gonna produce peppers, onions, Tomato, beta ball, plantain, you eat a special lot in three areas in the Republic of Liberia. Number two, we want to be able to produce our own juice, our own orange juice, purple juice, pineapple juice. We have some of the best fruits in the Republic of Liberia. I just came from there, Dennis. Mm. If you want to buy a bag of orange, you don't know, suck it today, that's it. It's going to waste. Now, if you want to produce some student in our area, they graduate. Remember now, my degree at the, at the at Haber College, we teach entrepreneurship. So that when you graduate, you're not waiting for you to be hired, but you are a creator of jobs. That is the kind of degree that we need. We need vocational education in Liberia. Look at blacksmith. Blacksmith in Liberia. We say ordering bare ballon colases from, where was that in India or China? Mm-hmm. We borrow. Is they coming to Liberia? spoons and simple things that we can use in the Republic of Liberia. When I, I remember talking about blacksmith, a degree in our area, vocational training, some people look at me like I was crazy. How do you put the young children to work? Now, uh, I remember the Manor River Unions and the Liberia, Celeleons and Africans, the, the, the great land supposed to pass through those three countries. And guess what? They are looking for qualified electricians now, here is the caveat. If you don't have trained individuals in your country, they are going to take them from different countries to, to, to bring them there. I saw Ghanaians running our, our power lines in, 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 in Liberia, planting, uh, 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 how they call it stuff, uh, 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 electric poles in the Republic of Liberia. Vocational education is paramount to develop the Republic of Liberia and put the youth back to work. Now we got TV there. But I have the problem that I have with is that they want for all, all the schools in Liberia to offer that program. And that's going to pose a problem. It better we confine it regionally and we develop the best school, for example, in our plumbing. Look, put all the resources in plumbing in eastern Liberia. Plumbing and electricity. Then we go to central Liberia. We put another wonderful good program there. Right. You see, then the area we have a special taste. But how many electricians do you have in Liberia? If you open the program to 24 
or to the yeah to the to the thirty three higher institution we learn, of learning we have in Liberia. Where are you going to find a professor from? Mm. And, and that was and uh, there's a question already for you, uh, Dr. Soma from Dave Ja, and you kind of mentioned it briefly. He said, "What steps are you taking at Habel College to set your institution in a way that it can serve as example for some of the ideas and aspirations about higher education that will move the country forward?" So while you was talking that, I just want you to uh, remember a question and. Uh, our origin to go on our website, www.hc.edu.lr. You will see curriculum of relevance. Curriculum of relevance. It means that the degree we offer in Liberia must, I'm not even saying should, must serve the local needs of the people. In other words, you graduate from Haber College, I expect you to go and work or establish your own business. So I am practicing what I'm preaching here. We have our civil engineering. We have our mechanical renewable engineering. We are still importing flash left from Pakistan or from India. Simple thing like radio. We don't have, we, you don't have a technicians. But Dr. Soma, do, do we have the teachers? Do we have the capacity to have those programs? But this is what I'm saying, Dennis. Mm. We need to put a plan in place. Okay. We got to map the future of Liberia. We have to ask other countries, you know, when we came out of the war, we were in a better position. Uh, you know, I used to be the director or I'm still the executive director of Lahiri. We wrote Fidel Castro and we're asking for 79 Liberians to go to that country and study doctors, all areas and stuff and things like that. When the information was sent back home, they refused. I'm not here to call names in the past. They refused. They said the man was a communist person. No, somebody giving you 70 scholarship to go lane. We need to build, build partnership with other universities. Hmm. Our ministers, they want to travel, whether as a self, I don't care what our country is. We ask them. In our coming. Yeah, and, and Saki, you, you, besides being a student, you also work at the Ministry yeah. of Education. So yes, please come in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what Dr. Soma was saying, talking about partnership, you see, uh, it, 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 is, it is sad that sometimes you start something and people who you think are the so benefit just relax and do nothing, all right? And it was in 2012 that uh, we had the Liberal Business and Education Conference in, in Monrovia, where we had uh, a lot of uh, colleges and universities in Liberia attending and other businesses. So the theme of the conference was uh, issues in tertiary education, connecting business with education. <laughs> And concerning all of the challenges that our tertiary education faces and, and how business institutions can tap in or to collaborate and also seek talents and um, help transition students into the job market from college to, you know, to career. So it was at that conference we had uh, the school I'm in right now, Clark Atlanta University, was represented by their president along with his High, delegate, high level delegation of his faculty. And uh, Dr. Carlton Brown was there, the president of Clark Atlanta University at the time. We had the, uh, well, the faculty from the science, the School of Art and Science, and we had an engineering. And schools representatives were there from various universities. They, we had that conference. And at that conference, to read the, the, the success from that conference, the University of Liberia signed an MOU with Clark Atlanta University. And as part of that MOU, uh, things that uh, the University of Liberia should benefit from faculty exchange, student exchange, service learning opportunities. And uh, I'm grateful to be one of the beneficiaries from that conference and from the MOU between uh, my university and, and, and Clark. That's why you see me here today. So mm -hmm. our 
But now you want to ask a question from that conference, how many of our educators, how many people at the leadership of our education made follow-ups to seek opportunities, to collaborate, to partner? How many? Very few. Mm. And today, I will tell you that I work with the uh, University Consortium for Liberia. We've been, uh, uh, I'm on the board of the University Consortium for Liberia. And one of our mission is to, uh, is to, is to coordinate diverse academic effort between Liberia and the US universities. So we've had successes, we've had student exchange, we've had faculty coming here and going back. We've had a lot of opportunities. Some students have come here and graduated, done their masters. Uh, of course, at Clark Atlanta, we have, I'm one of two persons doing PhD in chemistry, but how do we sustain this partnership? How do we uh, sustain a partnership to benefit Liberia in the long run. That is where the problem is. A lot of time we have these opportunities but people just sit back. After then it dies down and you see nothing again. But of course there are schools, there are people who still open with open arms who want to partner, who want so, to collaborate. So, so Saki, what is the problem there? Well, I think the problem is from our side, from Liberia. Okay. And uh, I, I don't really know how to identify who uh, and then uh, Casting blame is it's just the Liberian thing mm. of people just relax and sit back and see things dying down. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and Dr. Soma, you can weigh in one of those areas too, and you is where we place our emphasis. Like today, a lot of emphasis is being placed on the political side, believe it or not. Most of the uh, discussion we hear there around politics. So most of these things, I believe, are not being given the needed attention. Who responsible? I don't know. They are not. Uh, they are to, to be, to be frank with you. There's a, there's a problem. The manner in which higher education is uh, combined with the Ministry of Education. There is a need to have a ministerial position in the Republic of Liberia. In other words, we need to remove higher education. We need to separate higher education from the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. That will focus on the kind of thing the young man is talking about. You put all the MOU in place. And then no follow up gets done. Yeah. If you have someone who is the czar of higher education in the Republic of Liberia, Listen to some of the suggestions, historical thing that we had done. There's no way Mauritius would turn down Liberia because before she got her independent, Liberia was there. Mm -hmm. Ghana is not going to say no to Liberia. Uganda is not going to say no. Not even Togo. Look, beside the United States of America, how about France? How about Great Britain? I'm talking about the uh, blacksmith curriculum that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We have uh, tr uh, done everything to get in touch with a school in, in London. The only thing that's holding me back right now is to get a plane ticket and a transportation that my colleague doesn't have to go there. But just imagine how many people we are going to put to, to work if we were to succeed in the productions of our own collapses, mm -hmm. you know, and tools that we need Hulk and Dickerson, and you name it, in Liberia. The other area is automotive. Go to Liberia today. All the cars that we are shipping in the Republic of Liberia, they are what? Electronic. Who's going to repair them? That means you got to bring the Lebanese. You got to bring the Nigerians. You got to bring mm. the Ghanaians. We need to go and revise the curriculum of Liberia. We need to go and clearly delineate it. Uh, I mean, separate. Um, uh, higher education from the Ministry of Education, let one person focus completely mm -hmm. on that part. Okay. And then we, we go to the partnership that we're talking about. It's like it's like, like a watchdog that is sitting from a day in a day out thinking. That's a think tank. What is it that we need mm -hmm. to do to move Liberia forward? Writing grants, writing proposal. There is no university in the Republic of Liberia that is ranking. 
on a world scale, my friend. Mm. We are not ranked, not even in, in Africa. If I tell you our ranking at the world per telling me to be sad and despondent, it's saddening that our age, we have given independence to the nations. We have developed a curriculum. We have made history in electing female and you name it. The United Nations, we were there. The Equats, we were there. Every history that we have made has been taken from Liberia. Why is it our Equats is in, is in, is, is in, is in Nigeria? Why is it the, the OAU or the AU is in Ethiopia? When Tottenham led that efforts. Mm -hmm. So we put ourselves in, in, in places that we don't want to graduate from there. Right. And Dr. Soman, there's a term called degree factory that keep popping up. Anytime <laughs> I go. <laughs> Look, I think you mentioned that in one of your writings. I said it. I what said is it. that concept? <laughs> I said it. Degree factory means you're just giving people degree. They don't have the skill. You see the gentleman I call, I just forgot his name. Was it Dennis, Jimmy, right? Jimmy Eastman. Oh, okay. Jimmy. He called from Maryland. Yeah, that's Jimmy. Yeah, no. huh? His yeah, name is Jimmy. Our, our, our students, look, I want to be fair with my students when they graduate. I am not just going to give you a diploma that's going to be hanging on the wall and you catch a dust. It's a disservice to the students. It's a disservice to the nation. Give them skills. Look, about 78 to 80 percent of the graduating library are in business. Hmm. You come to Monrovia, right, Dennis? I will take you around. Personally, yeah, I will drive you from Wallace all the way to 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 to, to Arrow IA. Mm -hmm. Tell me how many Liberian businesses that you see that own stores on, on the line now, on the on the on the on the highway, on the, on the highway. Mm -hmm. zero. How many businesses that Liberia own in the Republic of Liberia? How many? And you want to get almost sixty to seventy percent of the degrees in that area? I mean, we can't do that. Let's be sincere here. Then that's a that's a fact. That we go to vocational and skilled learning. Those are the tools that can grow the economy. Until we sit together, we do that. We are going to be here for a long time. Okay, yeah. I got a question on here. Saki, you want to chime in? Go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you you mentioned the administrative education where I work. I, I just wanted to say something very, you know, my experience there. And, and what I think should have been done, things that uh, were not done. But, uh, and, and how, how did it affect our current, you know, state as, as a state of education? Now, I work at the Ministry of Education uh, in, uh, from 2011 to 2013, but I, I, I was in the Division of Science and Technology. And as part of my work as a, uh, a lab or uh, chemistry lab trainer and technician. I work with three of my colleagues, in, uh, two other colleagues, one in biology and physics. But uh, something that we, we thought we could have done to make our STEM education, you know, very good. At the time, there was a series of meetings going on with this WAS, you know, exam coming up. And we had uh, we had surveyed schools, we had done assessment around in schools in Liberia and in Monrovia, as a matter of fact, Montserrado. And Thotman High, if you look at Thotman High, at the time in 2011 when the president uh, signed a new Education Reform Act, uh, there's a video that you will see me on, I'm demonstrating in the lab. I was at Thotman High, and at that time we had set up the Thotman High lab through the, uh, the help of the Indian government that provided uh, almost two, about $2 million worth of science and laboratory materials. Mm -hmm. So under the Ministry of Education, so we were distributing those materials. And from my experience, I worked at Tottenham Half for almost a month trying to set up the lab and in uh, ahead of the president's, you know, the signing ceremony and the dedication of the lab. So uh, one of my one of our proposals to the ministry was, uh, based on how we saw Tottenham High Lab, the setup, the construction, all of those engineering specifications in the lab, we suggested that Tottenham High be used to set up our first standardized high school lab, that will be like a prototype. 
for mm -hmm. all other science labs. But you see, there's a problem that exists in our, our system where things are not well structured, mm -hmm. okay? And when it comes to building labs and things, go around, go to Pinsley Community School, go to MT ETMI, go to schools around where the Ministry of Education goes, they have the building and construction, people go and build labs. People are building labs with just the knowledge of engineering and construction, not the knowledge of how a lab supposed to be. You go to a lab, you just see a room. They say that's lab. I say, this is not a lab. This is just an empty room. A lab should be based on standard. We should set up standards of how these labs should be. This are, uh, lab is not just ordinary room, okay? It should, be a, 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 it, should, it should be based on standards set by the Ministry of Education that, that, had, that, that deals with issues of safety and uh, accommodation and all those things. And Totman High Lab, when you go and look at that lab, that lab is a standard lab, just that the capacity is small. But that was our proposal that invest in this lab, make this lab functional. And all of the things that should be make the lab functional, we wrote a preliminary report proposal, preliminary report on what was the need, what the needs. We'll look at the, the, the number of students in the school. We'll look at the lab and the capacity, the instructor's training, and all those things. And I tell you, all those things fell on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And if you don't prepare people for from the high school properly, who's going to take the science, those technical courses, those high physics courses, engineering, all those things? Right. They're not going to go there. People just want to go the easy way out. Yes. Okay. No, that, that's that's a that's a good point. We have a few questions online here. One is coming from Panendo, Dr. Suma. He said there was a recent educational summit held in Liberia at BWI campus. So so we want you to speak to that. What has been the outcome? Also, what is the role of the uh, commission on higher education? Isn't this commission already performing the role, the things that you are talking about? I know uh, we, we spoke of higher education before, but first talk about that uh, education summit. Yeah, well, uh, yes, there were conference held uh, there, but honestly, I don't think the time was enough. If you combine higher education with secondary education, you have a conference uh, that didn't really, I mean, at first, the, the minister did well. I think it's either the first or one of the few times in the history of a nation to call a conference on education. And, and I thank him for that. But I'm talking about higher education, the planning of higher education in terms of the situation that is in Liberia right now. What type of degrees and training our people need? I'm talking about getting the best professor to come and teach, revisions of the curriculum, accreditations of programs, forming partnership and innovations, scholarship and research. This stuff is not in Liberia, my dear brother. It's not there. So we say thank you to the Minister of Education. He did well. He's a best friend of mine. But we need to do more. Now, uh, the next question was what? The role of higher education, but I, I know you you mentioned that before. So let let let's move on. I think yeah, I think your question was whether they are performing uh, their responsibility. As mm -hmm. I said, it seemed to me as I speak, higher education reports to the minister of education or to the ministry. That's a problem. You go to other countries of look where other people have made mistakes. We cannot continue to make mistakes there. Go see Mozambique, go see all of Africa. So go see, you know, these countries that are around or they have, they are ministries of higher education. Right. And, and, and to that, to that suggestion, here's what Dave Jai is saying. He said the creation of a government ministry to spear higher education will be politicized and the best minds may not be recruited. Let government provide funds and let the professionals guide the process. Sure. So uh, for me, I'm not here for politics. I know everything is, is, is politics. I understand that. Look, I'm looking for primary solution to our problem. If they politicize it, let a young man say, you know, team fall on deaf ears in our country. And this yeah. is when I say that you go to Liberia, it's like a graveyard to me. All dreams are buried there. 
We need mm. to put politics aside. You talk about the development of our country. You're talking about putting the youth back to work. You talk about researching the Republic of Liberia. Look at the climate change stuff that is in that is going on. If we have partnership, by the way, I saw that going to Colorado because we offer the bachelor science degrees in climate change uh, and environmental science. I had an invitation. I can't go because no money. No we had an invitation with McCary. We couldn't go because lack of resources. But yet it's my point. If Haber Kali were able to pull that off, and we get a $10 million research, or $5 million research, or even $2 million, $2.5 million research in Liberia between the American University and Haber College, or any other colleges or universities in Liberia, we can use that money to develop our, 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 our institution. You know, I was in the country for 40 years. I taught here for up to 30 years in this country, man. I got friends that want to go to Liberia right now as I will speak. I don't have the first dormitory or staff house for someone that will just come there and teach for me for one, for one semester. Hmm. So how do you expect a college to survive, to bring in money? Yeah. It is research that puts the college on a world map. Right. Do we have any invention in Liberia later? Do you, do you know of any professor who I invented anything or, or presented or kind of scholarly people around the world that you and I can clap, clap for? I think I, Ghana and Nigeria, why they say we can't do I it? Think I yeah. uh, Saki knows. Saki, yes. who do you know? I mean, few people put out scholarly work. I know, especially from the, the physical sciences, I know, you know, people are trying to, you know, get themselves involved with, with writing and research. But the question is, how do we how do we fund why, that? Yeah, how why do we need research? What are the areas we need to get involved with research? And how would the research help, you know, make decisions and help our 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 our, our government help institutions to make decisions on how we can, you know, uh, develop our country. You know, not just any kind of research, but research that benefits like you he, like he's into or uh, his college is is into soft on uh, automotive engineering, uh, 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 different you know uh, vocational engineering mm -hmm. courses. So we need to focus on what it is that can propel our country. Okay, yeah. what are the areas in technology? So we focus in this place. And of course, you can't just say we're doing it. You have to put in money. Yeah. And and there where you cannot exclude politics, because the issue of the money. People decide on whether the money should go in their pocket or go for the general good of people. Mm -hmm. So you cannot exclude politics. Or go towards the re-election. Exactly. So, <laughs> so <laughs> funny, like the university needs funding. The Universal Library needs funding. Habel College needs funding. All the colleges around need funding. Then where do you get the money from? Where does most of the money go? And, okay. and that's and that's what worried me too. Uh, and Dr. Soma, you can talk about that with the uh, the community colleges. I don't know what's the uh, what's the plan to sustain them for the next twenty five to uh, fifty years. You talk about research. Uh, yeah, let me let me make a clarification when I when I said politics. Uh, I was not talking about not needing money for all to do what we have to do. But when you put an idea forward and somebody say, oh, okay, maybe the man is he he wants to you know uh, he want he looking for a job or he want to be president and all that stuff. Uh, uh, then as you know. From 2004 to 2006, we advocated for malaria. I use the word eradication. Because of that language, do you know that some people who are in higher ups in Liberia, they got angry with me? Do you want to come and pray, sing, or read a song and sing it in the need of mosquitoes that kill babies and doctors and our error is so the only word that I, I knew was eradication. My point is, what happened to Liberia? We brought seventy million dollars through our effort Afro cases from two thousand four to two thousand nine. When I used to go to Liberia, they say, "Oh, Dr. Soma's malaria program." It was apostrophe to my name until the money came. Today, I can't tell you where what happened. Some of the things that I wanted to do. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that kind of politics 
And some people, even when I was looking for, you know, I was going to, you know, anything I want to do in life, I say, I want to run for something, right? Mm-hmm. That's the kind of destructive politics that I'm talking about. But if, if, if everything that I'm saying here is not going to work, if there is no funding, this is what I say, Senegal, the highest in Africa, the highest in Africa, more than 20% of the national budget. You know what they produce in Senegal? Peanuts. Peanuts. Compare Senegal to Liberia that has at least 40 to 43% of the upper Guinea forest. Hmm. I'm not even talking about foreign economics. You have also be one of the more water nations in the world. Hmm. We can even produce our own tilapia in the Republic of Liberia. There are right. so many things we can do in terms of research. That's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. I, I agree with him so that we can have money to do this stuff. But I'm talking about destructive politics where people will take your, mm. your, your, your dream and they put a spin on it and they carry it to the place that you are not expecting them to, 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 to gravitate it. Let's shift towards the student. This month we have seen protests from the University of Liberal campus. And uh, there is a story, it says on January 17, 2018, students of the University of Liberia barricaded their president, Dr. Olivia Ines Weeks, in the auditorium of the Capitol Hill campus for nearly seven hours for ignoring their call to let the registration process continue. So with this student politics, and uh, I think last week they were in the street and I, I don't want to bring politics into this, but is this some is this kind of behavior isolated to the University of Liberia campus or is this something about higher education that we are teaching that is making students to be so active in, in political activities rather than even their own well-being as students on the campus. Because I've not seen students really advocating for research or for a new curriculum or for a learning resource center. But most of the time, we see students very active in national politics. What's about our higher education that is promoting that behavior? I think we're going to go to historical precedents. Okay. Uh, as I told you, uh, our, our, that university has some, some history that are not too pleasant in terms of demonstrations. Just, re, just, just as I said, uh, because there was a conflict between the Moral Base and the Clay Island Base, the university did not open until after four years. If you look at the history of that university, and people look at history. You know, you and I, we are saying something here today. Just listen to how many persons are going to hear it. For the next 15, 20 years, it will be in the back of the mind. The university did not allow people to enter there. People, many, the indigenous were not allowed. So they got to fight their way in. You had to change your name. Look, if you hear uh, Water Sing, uh, Tama Sing, those who had uh, quote-unquote native or country names, you got to put S into it. So you can mm-hmm. sound American or European, so you can go to the University of Liberia. Mm-hmm. You see? So, so, so that struggle for education, true. for quality education, to be educated, to be able to help your country and yourself, that struggle has been there. So other people went and politicized academic at the University of Liberia. You saw what happened when Samuel Doe got there. They sent soldiers there. You see, okay? So people have always used students and somebody will say chicken or chickens come to roost or a chicken comes to roost. That's what is going on in Liberia. It's a historical precedent. We saw it uh, at the time Baker Matthew returned from uh, returned to the country with, 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 with the power organization. You, you see, uh, what happened? It led to what? The demise of uh, Richard Talbot. I'm just telling you, this is not anything new what we need to do as a nation and people is to find a lasting solution to this problem. Who in America, who in Ghana, who in Israel, or in Japan that want to send their student to a university where the president every day you hear on the internet, on the radio, a barricade, you cannot come outside until after seven hours. What is going on? So we need to find a lasting solution to the, to the, to the problem. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, look, so, Saki, what is going on? What, what is yeah, going on? Uh, yeah, you see, it's the thing about students uh, voicing their concern 
it's it has been it has been a tradition in Liberia, and uh, it's hard to just live without it. Mm. But uh, from my experience, I, uh, I, my experience and my approach, I was into student leadership, and uh, in high school and in college, and uh, my approach was more for diplomatic and addressing things through, through dialogue. dialogue and, you know, for example, uh, when Dr. Conte was president of the University of Liberia, at the time I was assistant secretary general for the chemistry university students. And of course, all of the small associations fall under the University of Liberia Student Union. But as part of the leadership of my association, we needed qualified professors to teach some chemistry courses like inorganic chemistry, okay? And we, there were a couple of, there were a few people around with professional degrees in, in, in chemistry and physics that we wanted the university to employ these people. But it was hard because the university complained that they don't have money to pay these people. So we had to negotiate go to offices of the provost, the president of the university at the time, Dr. Conte, and it spilled over when Dr. Dennis came, we continued to cry. But we never went one day to his door and said, you cannot come out. I think that's in discipline. That defeats the purpose of, of being a university student where you should be educated and trained to be a leader of your country and your society. So, uh, but again, I will state it that the issue of student advocacy and uh, uh, it, it's a tradition in Liberia that you cannot live without. But I think in this day and age, our students need to refine their thoughts and approaches to things. I tell you what Dr. Dennis did when he became president. And I think we're still trying to continue this couple or a few years ago, we've been trying to continue this. Uh, where student leaders from the universities travel abroad and get experience and some cultural exchange of ideas with other student leaders. And like in the US, we've had a lot of student leaders come here and go back over the years, right. last 10 years. And that gives you a different perspective about students on the other side of the world, all right? Not only to say, okay, I don't think it was meant to stop students from rioting or uh, running after the university presidents and you know closing them up in meetings, but it was meant for people to sit and think on how a student ought to be in this day and age. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's my own perspective about things when it comes to student leadership. I took it from a different way. And I achieved, yeah. we achieved, we met our goals, we approached yeah. it professionally. And we saw things working. Right. Dr. Soma, there's a question from Jimmy. He said, you were talking about the conferences that you needed to attend. So what Jimmy is saying, can you use representative already in those countries to attend those conferences? For example, you had to go somewhere to Great Britain, but there was no money. Can you designate someone there to say, OK, do this for us? Yeah, we, we are doing that. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all my plan up there, what it said that we are doing. However, when it comes to signing the memorandum of understanding and meeting with the presidents and having the discussion with the other institution, uh, you, you have to go and meet them. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a higher institutional learning. Now I'm going to hire somebody to say, okay, go and represent the college. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful. But we are, we are working. Uh, you you got to be creative in the kind of things. Uh, yeah. I am here tonight, this evening. I'm asking... Uh, Liberians all over the world, if you uh, listen to me, uh, yeah. we are asking you to help our country, to help the colleges and the universities that are there. In what way? In what way? The institutions and uh, higher ed uh, 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 educations and uh, companies and uh, you name it. See, approach them to see what is it that we can do uh, in our country. Like, the young fellow, he, he, he made a very salient point. It is good for our uh, Kali leaders uh, to travel. 
you know, it, it opens the world to them to see what yeah. other people are doing. If you just only sit in Liberia there, you don't see other country. We had no, uh, you forget about America for one bit. Why is it we don't have student that change with Uganda, with Mauritius, yeah. eh? with Ethiopia, or other places that are conducive for all to go? No low hanging fruit. You see, yeah. why we don't do that? We need to have conferences, how to solve the kind of demonstration problem. Conferences where the student can come yeah. and present their paper, the professor can come and present their paper. I don't know when la where, where the, the colleges and universities ever put on a conference and say, okay, today we are going to focus on A, B, C, or you can like that. <laughs> uh, then it, this this stuff is uh but Dr. Soma and, and Saki, I want to bring you in on that too. What yeah. role can diaspora librarians play? And, and I want you to specifically say that because there are some of us here that can do even what the program we are doing now. If you can play this clip in a high school or in a college in library, that will go a long way to explain some of these concepts. So what role can the diaspora librarian play in the assisting librarian's higher education system? Specifically, tell me. And, Before and, I speak and to that, there is one. How can you one, encourage us to do that? There is, there is one major issue I need to address. Okay. And it is said in my vernacular language. But in English, they said you cannot leave the guts in a rat and you roast it. It's not going to be done. It's not only a rat alone. If you want to roast a goat, you don't take out the intestine. It's not going to be edible. You can burn it or you cannot roast it in that faction. The division between the diaspora and the inland Liberia, we need to work on it. Hmm. It is an inherent hate for some of all who left this country and went back to help. It's them versus us. And that kind of attitude or the way we look at each other as if we are stranger, we are looking for the national leader to solve the problem once and for us. When we do that, then we can go to the second step. Uh, Dennis, I taught at North Carolina a and State University. It's no secret. I'm a tenure professor there, or I was a tenure professor. I was stay in the country and taught until I dry, and I retire, be dead, and be buried here. But as a native, my parents' fossils are interred under the earth of Liberia. I went back. Mm -hmm. Do you know they call me foreigner in that place? Now I become Hebrew in my own country. If you listen to some of those things that they tell telling, some of who went back, it is discouraging. But nobody more Liberian than the guy that is speaking to you. So I will stay mm -hmm. in there with Duke out. I have right. made up my mind that I've gone back to help higher education in Liberia. Now, I said it from the very beginning. You got an institution with even in a degree in manufacturing. What distinguish all the developed nations in the world are manufacturing? See how many stuff Chinese are producing and sending to our country. We don't even put anything out of Liberia. Now, mm. for some of you who are here, we're not asking for millions and millions of data from, from you guys. But I think somebody said the first thing. Represent one of the colleges. Uh, if it means that you adopt one high school in Liberia, maybe your organization, I'm asking you right now to do that with Haber College because of the historical stuff that you are doing in terms of Liberian study, the scholarship that you guys are doing over there. We fought the war in Liberia because we don't know our own history as a people where we came from, that yeah. we are one people that we migrated from Central Africa so many miles a year we migrated that the Basa, the Sapo, the Bele, the Klao, we are one people. That the men grew, you can go there and you put the pedal and, and, and pull from Lofa and the Kisi, that we are one people. If we had taught that type of history in the Republic of Liberia and then mm. respect our cultural institute, we would not have fought the one and destroyed ourselves. Mm. So some people had the audacity that the war was going on in Liberia. Why is it we didn't go there to fight? For me, who am I going to be fighting if I have gone to Liberia? Mm. In Togo, Guinea, Sierra Leone had declared war in Liberia. You bet, I would have gone there. Mm. I would have fought until I die in the front line. So I'm going to killing brothers and sisters, killing sisters and mother, killing fathers and all that kind of say, going to blame people who right. 
that they didn't go back to Liberia to fight the war. I didn't go there, but my organization fought enough and advocated that our country got 70 thousand, I mean, million dollars. Good. So, Good. some Good. of the things I've so done here, you we, we are, back here can do that as well. Okay. So, so yeah, but you, you didn't. Yeah, that's right. good. We, we, our and time is day, Some of you can teach, okay? Right. Some of you can teach. No. In no, this, uh, Doctor Soma, to, to that point, you see, I, I brought up an idea in our uh, county association about teach for Liberia of some form of Peace Corps volunteer. I said, well, we should be the Peace Corps now, but it really has to do with people in Liberia. What can they do to uh, kind of facilitate this kind of process? Like for instance, Ministry of with all our alumni associations in the states, Ministry of Education should have some form of, of an alumni office to coordinate all these efforts. But it is that it should be at the embassy. They, we got a uh, educational and cultural uh, uh, office at the embassy. It shouldn't not only be in Washington. The country is too big. You need some in Atlanta, in New York, and other parts of this country. It should not just be only in the United States, in the United Kingdoms, in France. This is what I'm saying, Dennis, from the very beginning. We need to sit down okay. and map up all these stuff and put them in place. Some of the computers that you got on one in this country, you, you got to train away. Yeah. You need it in Liberia. We need lawnmower, even on my campus. There's some lawnmower sitting down here that I bought myself. I got to ship them to Liberia. We need it. There's nothing small to be used in, in Liberia. Some people are here. They got a master. They got a PhD. Nobody going to build Liberia for us. We need a kind of help. Yeah. The promotions of some of the colleges. Now, if, if, if some of you can reach out to your representatives in this country, we got the uh, Negro or the Black Historical Colleges and so forth. Yeah. For some of them who are in I'm, Philadelphia, do you know we had a, a historical link with Lincoln University? They were going to send the first I'm, librarians there to go and get that education. Why is I'm, it we don't have Lincoln you. University in no more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly what you said, because no, he Professor. Talks, he, you're talking about Black Historical College, and that my school is one of those Black mm -hmm. schools, Historical College, HBCU. But, but, yeah, I know that. I, I know but, that. I know your school very well. The, I think the issue here is we don't have that base in Liberia that's going to coordinate. Uh, last week, we had a, a, a Mrs. Uh, Greaves here from uh, the um, from from Liberia. And one thing we're talking is if you have an office in Liberia that will coordinate that will kind of serve because all of us, we go there as individuals and we are floating all over the place. Who in Liberia will serve as that magnet to harness all these resources and all these uh, association, organization, all these ideas? This is what I'm saying to you. It, ha it has to be the commissioner on higher we got, education. We got to it say that. It has to be uh, the minister for higher education in the Republic of Liberia. It is their responsibility to establish partnership and research and coordination of all the kind of stuff that we're talking about. But it is not happening in our country. And we need to be fair. We are, we're not taking anything from anybody who are serving our position. But we've got to be sincere and say, look, this is what we need to do. The government does not have the money all the time. So we've got to find ways to raise fundings. We've got to find ways to form partnerships. We've got to yeah. find ways to look for retired professors to come to library and teach. Another problem that is inherent in our educational uh, curriculum there is this 58, 52 liberal art courses. Man, this is huge. They are saying that you must complete in a liberal art department now, division, yeah. 52 credit hours before you move on. That is huge. The student don't have money already. And it pushes the, the credit hour to what? Some of the, I mean, for the bachelor, some places, 146, 150. Some of the master degree, if you look at it, you, you, cannot, you cannot afford it. We need mm. to look at all kind of stuff. The another problem is that when a university or college is established, they say you should graduate what? Two, you should have two successive graduations before you offer a master degree. I mean, we, we come up with all this stuff that they're bottleneck development in, in Liberia. So mm. this is what I'm saying. Bringing the expert together, we right. all forget about it. Oh, you are the diaspora. You don't belong to Liberia. You are Hebrew in your own country. You need to come back. You don't know Hebrew in Liberia. We need to sit down and step by step and look at this stuff. The other areas that I, that you know we discussed about this already, Dennis. 
you got to yeah. send Liberian abroad to get masters and PhD. How are today, young man? I hope you're going to come and help my chemistry department. We need to do more of, of, of the kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You got people there up to now. They say teaching in the university. I mean, a high school with a B and a B. What is it? B and C certificate. Man, if I stay in the classroom for four years, you want to tell me you cannot give me a a, a scholarship to come to Haber College and get a, a bachelor's of degree in education from there? You got to give people incentives. Yeah. Pay them good money, good facility. Right. In the long term, it's going to pay off for the Republic of Liberia, and we are going to be the city on the hill once again in Liberia. Okay, Amen. So, uh, can I ask, do you, have a, do you have a chemistry program now? Yes, we have a chemistry program, and this is on our education program. The way yeah. we offer our degree in Liberia, we don't produce one person that's going to teach all the subjects in the Republic of Liberia. We don't do that. If you get your Bachelor of Science degree, it has to be in chemistry. That's it. You get your Bachelor of Science degree in biology. You are specialized in teaching biology. It's not the other university where you get that Bachelor of Science, you go and start teaching everything. We don't do it like that. Our other areas of specialization is special need, special education. You got young children in Liberia that, got, that have special needs. They got no way to go to school. So we put that program in, in place. So our Bachelor of Science degree in primary and secondary, they are in full concentration with specialization in the area. So our answer is yeah, we got, we got, we got chemistry. That's okay. good. I, I'll, be, I'll be glad to have some exchanges with you and, you know, and how we can work together in the future. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you have it. And it's forming right here on Focus on Liberia. We, we, are, we are drawing down the curtains. I see a lot of uh, comments and questions on Facebook. Uh, I see uh, they are asking about your school, Habel College. Does your school have a relationship with Firestone? Does Firestone assist you with any funding. I don't want you. <laughs> uh, uh, Dave Jai got his last word. He said, number one, there is a need to introduce national service or internship for a year before graduation. Our universities are breeding grounds of taking heads and not practical scholars of talking heads. Education is not cheap, but if your student wants cheap and free education, they will get it. But remember what is cheap is uh, and free may not last long. So th th those are his thoughts. Dr. Dr. Topo says, uh, government need to prioritize or fund. Government needs to invest in education as Dr. Wallow Topo. Uh, Eastman said, uh, Jimmy from uh, needs your contact, Dr. Soma. So uh, that's, that's a relationship forming right here. Let oh, me yeah. get your last words. Uh, first, let me start with you, uh, Mr. Olafale. Thank you for coming uh, you know, to share your experience and your thoughts. Now your final words before we close down the curtains. Yeah, uh, I would like to say thank you for having me on this evening. And uh, I think we should continue this conversation because without us talking about these things, we may not have uh, the ears to hear and you know, find solutions to them, to the challenges. And I think uh, uh, education is, is, is a foundation for development in any society. And, and, and that's for which we have to prioritize. If, if we should focus on education for the next six, 10, 15 years, put huge effort in, put huge funds and resources into education, like Dr. Soma said, map out, you know, the whole plan for education or for Liberia. We, we need to be serious. We've come a long way with talking about the challenges without solutions. I'm more than willing to work with anyone. Put politics aside, it's not about who is in charge of the country or who is who. It's about Liberia, okay? Anything that has to do with developing Liberia, I'm willing. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Liberia. We had a scholarship uh, discussion at uh, our workshop at the University of Liberia with students. And from that workshop, the number of emails I have received about students want opportunities. I'm working with some students, mentoring them, giving them advice on how to uh, look for colleges and 
for higher high for for graduate programs and a lot of other opportunities. So I think we have to we have to focus. We have to have a national agenda, and in that agenda, yeah. we we have to point out what propels our country. Is it that we should focus too much on politics or putting money in politicians' pocket, or we have to put money more into education? We have to be very frank about our our country. People put more money in their pockets than into institutions that can propel the country to development. So we have to be serious. But again, Liberia is all we have, is our common denominator. My heart is in Liberia. I'm willing to come back in the next year or two to help people like Dr. Soma and his school to you know, develop the science and chemistry programs, physics, mathematics, and also in other school, Tottenham University, Universal Liberia, where my heart is, of course, and, and, and it's been a pleasure this evening talking with you all and having these exchanges. And I hope people will not only listen, but from these discussions, they can make policy decisions about how we can uplift our higher education system in Liberia. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Soma. And, and before you start, tell us, if, before you uh, make your final comments, what are some of the projects you're working on at Haber College? You know, and how... Okay. We are forming partnerships with uh, international uh, institutions uh, for accreditation. I want for Haber College to be accredited internationally. It is nationally. I want it to be one of the best colleges, research colleges in the Republic of Liberia. So we are doing that. I know somebody talked about internship. If you uh, have seen some of my uh, visits, uh, to the various ministries uh, for our civil engineering. We are working, I have written the Ministry of Public Works. Myself, I went there. I talked with the deputy ministry so our people can go there and intern. We went to the labor ministry for our occupational safety and health program. We are producing safety engineering in the Republic of Liberia. Um, I went to JFK. I went to other places. Uh, Asta Mata in, uh, uh, what is that, Grand Basel. We have uh, approached them. So those are some of the things that, that we are doing. Uh, some of the projects is to go to our chiefs. They are setting a lot of lands in Liberia. Haber College only had 20 acres of land. To me, this is very small for the college. I need 500 to 1,000 acres of land. I said that to my representative to speak to some of the uh, chiefs so that either they give all the land for the endowment or they give it to us who can pay cheap price for that, for agricultural productions in the Republic of Liberia. Those are some of the things that we are doing. We want to do our grow our own program to approach other colleges and university to uh, allow some of our professors to go there and study and come back. Um, by the way, Haber College, we are strongly uh, uh, in favor of sports to produce athletes that will go and represent our country. Uh, in Mexico, the next uh, Olympic that is coming there, we have the best female soccer team right now in the Republic of Liberia. Uh, so we want sport academy for the young girl for our track and field and so forth. Uh, so there are a lot of stuff that we are doing uh, in, in Liberia when it comes to uh, Haber College. Our curriculum, uh, all curriculum are relevant with specialization and backed by entrepreneurship so that when you graduate, you go work for yourself. That is our focus. Okay. So those are some of the things that we are uh, doing. I know somebody asked about for Firestone. Yes, they're helping us with electricity. Uh, they help us to cut our grass. We have asked them to electrify our campus. And um, they responded to that. And this coming semester, it will, it will be uh, the first time that we're going to have uh, running electricity on our campus. We've been using generator. Uh, I'm not saying we have everything at Haber College. We are the least funded, the least funded college in the Republic of Liberia. We started with $250,000. Then it was five hundred and. 24,000. Then the third year, it was 545, but the $200,000 from us because of the election, we operated our college with $422,000. And my budget this year is $540,000. I only have one Jeep and a pickup truck. The other two cars that were there we were using, that were my personal car that I took with me to Liberia. We need help. We need to reach out to all the Liberians that are here. We can say anything to Haber College. If we come to the vision and what it takes to make Liberia a better country, 
the vision is there, the plan is there. The only thing that is needed is the implementation that our government, we should see reason. Our citizens should see reason to come back to Liberia. That country is, it got resources. You can go into the productions of orange juice, people right. putting water in bottle and in plastic in Liberia. You can talk to other companies where you are if they have recycling uh, companies there. Tell them the, 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 the amount of plastic bags that we have in Liberia, we can produce our own slipper and washing bowl and all that kind of stuff and things like that. We need co new curriculum in Liberia, agronomy for agriculture, wastewater management. We need to go in different, different areas to produce the skill individual that are needed for the development of Liberia. That's what we need to do. Right. And your, now your final thoughts, if that's not final. Well, I am, I am happy. Then you see, I'm, you, I'm, I'm talking here like a, like a revenue, but, I, but I, I must have. Uh, yeah, you know, when you, when you are happy, you make mistake, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am a satire. Right. Uh, because this stuff, it can be done in Liberia. I can feel I'm that. Happy. You're right. Country. I'm still believing in our, our country, in our leadership. Uh, we need to work together, do some of the things that I had said in terms of coming back home, putting a plan together. For me, I can't be hating. You put my name on the internet, you're going to see all my uh, my telephone numbers and my email for those who are asking me to get them my telephone number. My email is sssuma at, I mean, at ac.edu.lr or mm -hmm. you go to www.ac.edu.lr edu.lr, you click on that, you will see Habel College. Or just Google Habel College, go to the president page, click on it, and every information that you need about me is there. There got to be a mental revolution in Liberia, mm -hmm. not violent. Educational revolution in Liberia. We need to work together as one people, one nation. And for me, the way I look at it, the talking is too much. What I'm looking for in Liberia is a practical solution. We sit down, this is what we need to do, how we do it, when we're going to do this, how we're going to evaluate it, when we're in the timeline, and when we're going to see some tangible result. That is the kind of education that I want to see in the Republic of Liberia. So I want to thank you once again for having me, your staff, and all those who listen to this broadcast. I want to thank each and every one of you. And thank you so much. Um... Thank you for your time. Thank you for the knowledge that was shared. Thank you, Mr. Gulafale, and thank you for the work all of you are doing for our dear country. Again, as I, I can't stress it enough, Liberia is the only country we have, so we must do whatever it takes. And let me just slip this in. With uh, working at Focus on Liberia has put us at advantage that we really interact with a lot of Liberians across the spectrum. And I can tell you, Liberia has so many educated people, so many people trained in so many disciplines. And all we need is, uh, you know, sitting down and someone or a time that we can harness all these resources and all this human, you know, capacity so as to develop our country. We already have everything. To me, it's just like a puzzle. We have all the pieces. All we need to do is just to plug them in the right places and we're ready to go. I, again, I want to thank you from our staff all of us here at Focus on Liberia, we want to say thank you for being here. We want to thank all our, um, our people watching us on Facebook Live. Thank you so much because of you, we're here. Again, want to thank Dr. Soma Saki. Thank you so much. Until next time, from my producer, from my guest relations manager, also from me, and also from my co-host, we say thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you.